Got room for one more? They call him the hangman. When the handbell says dead or alive, the rest of us just shoot you in the back and up on top of perch somewhere and bring you in dead over a saddle. But when John Roof, the hangman, catches you, you hang. Get in, boys! This here is Daisy Domergue. She's wanted dead or alive for murder. When that sun comes out, I'm taking this woman to hang. Anybody here committed to stopping me from doing that? Well, well, well. Looks like Minnie's haberdashery is about to get cozy for the next few days. Yes, it does. One of them fellas is not what he says he is. Move a little strange, you're gonna get a bullet. Not a warning, not a question. A bullet. Oh, now we're talking. Hey everybody, this is Andrew Jones and it's time for another art cast. This is episode 26 and we just heard there at the beginning of the video was um, at least the audio from the new uh, teaser trailer from Quentin Tarantino's new movie called The Hateful Eight, uh, which is going to be out this winter, I think December, I think. Um, I'm a big Tarantino fan. I loved his last movie, Django Unchained. And uh, as soon as I saw that video uh, of the trailer, I decided I'd just have to draw something from it. And what better to draw than Kurt Russell's giant mustache from this new movie? It, uh, it's just it's mesmerizing to look at. So <clears throat> this is a uh, one of my digital paintings. Um, I've been doing a lot of these lately. You may have seen my previous videos for um, where I painted Skeletor and a few other things. Um, the octopus from the Penguins movie. <clears throat> I'm really getting into this. Um, there's a lot of really good artists that I'm following that are helping me out a lot um, just by watching them and, and what they do. Um, but I think I'm getting better at this. Um, I'm unfortunately not getting any faster. Um, the problem I've been having with these is that they just seem to take forever and I think a lot of it is just because A, I'm learning and B, I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist so I tend to just kind of noodle with it forever and ever and I just need to find a place to call them done or at least done enough uh, so I can move on to the next thing but I'm having a blast um, learning all this uh, new technique and I think they've been coming out really well. Um, there's always something that I, you know, about every painting that I just hate, uh, that I would love to just go in and, and noodle with some more, but you just you just can't. You've got to move on to the next piece. But there's always, you know, pieces of every painting that I just love, um, and hopefully as I get better at this, there'll be more pieces of each painting that I love more than I don't like. At least that's the idea. Um, and hopefully as I do more of these, I can get a little faster. That's been the problem with some of the uh, time-lapse paintings that I've been doing lately. Um, and why I've done the last couple as two-parters, just because it does take me so long. And by the time, even by the time I speed up the video, and I've been speeding these up at, I think, 800% speed, they still end up being really long. Like, I think the... The Skeletor piece all in was like 40, 45 minutes, something like that. So I had to split it into two. And I also haven't been doing a lot of narration on these pieces. Um, a lot of it is because they have been really long. And 
I've I've been unsure about whether people wanted to hear me just ramble on for 20 or 30 minutes over these videos. So a lot of times I would rather just find some dialogue or find some little um, you know audio cues from the movie and then put in some royalty free music and you know fill that time but a lot of these videos even the ones that I'm splitting into two parts finding good audio that doesn't repeat itself is really really hard and it takes a lot of time I think on that last video I probably spent an hour to an hour and a half just getting audio together and that's not an efficient use of time either so while I, I like the way some of those videos sound and they they come out really polished but you know it, it does take a lot of time and I don't want to not do videos just because I just don't have time for them so this video I've actually gone through and I've cleaned out a lot of unnecessary video there's a lot of places where you might see me just go over different brushes to try to see what was gonna get the right effect there's no reason to watch me do that for two three minutes uh, even sped up so I've cut out a lot of that stuff there's places where um, you know I do things over again so I just go back and get rid of the original version um, and hopefully you know that's not too much um, you know heavy editing that it's not giving you a, a good look into what I'm doing it just kinda keeps things moving along you don't see me just playing around with brushes and, and a bunch of other stuff that I end up not even using because there's a place in here where I actually do part of his mustache and then go back in and completely do it again um, and there's a couple places like that where I just I feel like that's it's not worth watching that all again I you'd probably rather see me work on the finished product so anyway um, just talking about this piece a little bit um, at this stage I'm still trying to get the hang of how to go from a sort of pencil sketch look to actually getting in all of the the blocked colors you know just getting the color base down to get the the shape of the face and the hair and getting to the point where I can start turning off the sketch layer um, although I'll admit you'll see me every once in a while here turn the sketch layer back on and it actually adds kind of a neat look so I think with a upcoming piece what I might actually try to do is uh, leave a lot of the sketch in and see how that makes the piece different um, in fact what I might even do is go back to some of my uh, some of my pencil illustrations on paper and bring those into Photoshop and color those and see to see what happens with that because um, I do think it has a really neat look to it when the sketch layer is on so I just wanted to see if you know that might be a look that I can do every once in a while but I do want to try to push myself and try to make sure that I can I can do these full paintings and not rely on the sketch layer underneath that I can actually bring out the the shapes and the color and everything without that I feel like that's a crutch um, at this point just because I'm trying to learn how to do this The other challenge of this piece is that the reference that I'm using it's it's a really dark scene um, the background has this kind of purple tone to it so that's where a lot of this uh, this tone is coming from and I like that look but one of the troubles I was having with it was the whole thing was just so dark um, and even me sitting at my Cintiq screen with the lights off I was still having trouble discerning some um, color differences so there's places in here like even with his eyes that are really dark right here um, I actually go in later and kind of lighten them up because they seem to overpower his face at this point the other thing that I I've always had trouble with with these pieces is not 
um, or being afraid to push lights and shadows. And I think, especially later on in this one, um, you know, I do a lot better job of that um, to the point where I think some of the shadows in his face uh, get to be too dark. Um, but again, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to mess with it all day. Speaking of things that, that I like about these pieces, um, at least at this point in the painting, I really like that you can still see brush strokes. Um, I, I think I mentioned in previous videos where even though I'm smoothing out some of these, um, just to prove me wrong, uh, I still like seeing those brush strokes. Um, I think a lot of digital paintings I see, they just look too, too blended, um, too smooth. Um, and I like seeing those strokes. Here is a neat little trick that I, I think I discovered, maybe not, um, to do this stubble. Um, I just found this um, kind of splatter brush that made all these little dots. And then I went in and applied a motion filter to make them look a little bit elongated like hairs. Um, and, and made the, the motion go along the, the direction that I think the hairs would be going on his face. And then uh, just play with opacity and things. And now I'm kind of going in and just suggesting a few, you know, random hairs. Uh, but I was really, um, I was actually really surprised that came out so good and kind of proud of myself for coming up with a technique like that. Um, in fact, I don't know, maybe I should do like a quickie tutorial on just that. Um, if you guys like that, that technique, you know, maybe I can go through and do that um, in real time as a tutorial. But I wasn't really sure how I was going to do the stubble. I mean, you can go in and do them hair by hair and it would take forever. But, um, you know, I think it looks really, I think it looks really natural the, the way it came out. Here, just trying to add a little bit more shadow between his face and uh, his hairline. Now we're going into the, the body. And that purple of his like inner coat or whatever that is, um, I did end up lightening up a little bit later just because I, uh, I just couldn't make out the detail. Even, even with a, you know, a bright monitor and the lights off, I just, I just could not see the difference. And here, um, in the, the white shirt and the, the purple um, inner coat um, I did on the same layer because there's, and the, the skin of his, uh, his neck, um, I did all on the same layer. Um, and I, I need to try to do that more just because there's a definite difference in the way edges look when you do all the colors that butt up against each other as opposed to doing everything on separate layers. Sometimes if, if one color layer is on top of another one and the line is just too crisp, it just looks fake. It just looks like, I, I, I don't even know how to explain it. It just looks like, um, you know, you just, it's just a cookie cutter. Um, that line is just so unnatural and there's such a distinction between one color and another. They don't have any variation between them, even if it's a really thin one. But there's sometimes when I just have to do things on different layers, especially if I need to use really big brushes and do a lot of big sweeping um, strokes. But uh, I'm also getting a little better about merging them later on, and then I can can make some, you know, some blending between them later. This coat was fun to do. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with some of the the shadowing and and things on it later on, but. Um, for the most part, I think it came out really well. You can see the um, sort of the furry edges um, around the, the outside of it. Had a lot of trouble with these shadows. I don't know why. Again, I'm trying to use shades of purple to do some of the shadowing so that it kind of matches the, the overall scheme. But as I get into those bigger strokes, they start to look weird, um, unnatural.
Keep playing with those shadows, man. I should have cut that part out. That was a bunch of the stuff that I usually I'm trying to cut out now, so you don't have to see me struggling. Here I'm just adding a few highlights around the edges. And right here, if you can see my um, my layers in Photoshop there, I'm using a lot of, well, I do one of two things. Sometimes I'll, I'll block out the main colors, kind of just as flat colors, and then I will um, either turn on the transparency um, for that layer. That way I can paint over top of those solid colors without going outside the lines. But lately, I'm also starting to use separate layers with clipping masks, where basically I can do the same thing. I can paint inside the lines of the the base color layer, but it's non-destructive. So I've still got the the benefit of being able to manipulate those layers afterwards or get rid of them if it didn't work, that kind of thing. Here, I'm playing around with different fur brushes. Uh, these, this brush set is from uh, Aaron Blaze, who makes a lot of really great custom brushes, including a lot for fur and hair because he does a lot of animal paintings. Um, I don't know what he would use this brush for. It looks like maybe bear fur, but I just thought it, it worked great um, as, a, as a texture for this coat. I didn't think I'd be able to match the the photo reference perfectly with that texture um, and it is what I came up with is different but uh, I thought it came out really well so actually one of my favorite features of this painting here just going into the background again I, I want the, these backgrounds to be super basic um, a lot of times they're they're even sort of blurred out because they're they're definitely not the focal point of the piece so here I'm just putting in some lines to suggest wood. Um, I've got the outline of the uh, the blue tinted window back there. And again, it's so dark you can barely make it out, but just adding a little bit of what might be wood texture in the background. Adding in some uh, suggestions of snow and ice on the window panes, and again, I'm I'm not getting too precious about any of this because I know I'm just going to be blurring it out later. As long as it can suggest what I want it to suggest, and the placement of these things in the background is not exact to the photo reference, but um, I thought it was. I really wanted that window in the background for one thing, and uh, I thought it evened out this corner to have this this skull in the background. And who doesn't like painting skulls? I mean, come on. And again, not not super. Try not not getting super detailed with this skull, because again, it's it's going to be blurred out in the background. Now here, I actually was not happy with the hair in his mustache, so I went back to some of Aaron Blaze's fur brushes and was able to find a couple that I thought worked better for the mustache. Again, I could play with that thing all day long, and uh, but you just gotta you just gotta move on. I, I think that works better than what I had before, and I had to redo his sideburns as well to kind of match that. You know, here I'm I'm definitely not happy at this point with um, his hair, so I'm adding in a little bit of texture, um, the highlights 
uh, just aren't working for me and I that's something that I'll fix later so here I am going and, and pushing those shadows a little bit more and you can probably tell at this point I've gone in and lightened up the eyes and that was a process that I either didn't record or I think I I may have just cut out just hitting it with a little little brighter highlights just to make that side pop out a little more a little more hair detail now you'll see here coming up um, we're at 21 minutes and I think we've got about another minute to go um, I'll show the final piece and you'll see that after a certain point I just stopped recording because I just kept noodling with it and I, I didn't want to make a five-hour video um, so you'll see at the end places where I went in and, and cleaned up other things and made some adjustments but um, I'm almost there at this point um, really just trying to get the hair hair cleaned up a little bit more really going in there with more shadows I think at this point maybe I should have stopped um, you know I think maybe these shadows went a step too far And you'll see in the finished piece, I, I made his eyes a little more squintier. Um, I thought they were a little too wide open uh, for the likeness, but that's about it. And here's the, the finished piece. You see, the I like the little uh, blue highlights to suggest the moonlight coming in on his, on his uh, coat. The squintier eyes, they're going in another direction now, which I think works a little better. But that's it. On to the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.